So today I saw a headline that after a couple of hours really irritated me because I thought about it in context. This, it was the Disney decision to launch Soul on streaming. Now that, that may not seem like much to you at first, but think about this. The same people that decided on this move are the same people that are asking you as taxpayers to fund theater bailout because the movie industry is failing. So you should pay for this. You should put your money on the line, but Disney, they shouldn't put theirs. Hmm, that's really telling, isn't it? So hey there. So today we are returning to that wonderful, wonderful world of Hollywood where essentially you're being asked to pay for something, but Disney, they don't want to foot the bill. Now in my opinion, this move, it speaks to the state of Disney too, because Disney, they are not worried about another PR calamity. Oh no, they're worried about staying in the game. I mean, if you look up headlines right now about Disney, I mean, this this is from October 12th, so this is brand new. Disney, they're firing workers by the thousands while its executives cling to their absorbent bonuses. And the battle to reopen Disneyland is getting more desperate. So they have this PR nightmare that looks just like this. Like I said, it's getting bad. And they decide, we're not even going to pretend that cinema is an option. Oh no, we're going to start streaming our own movies because, hey, we need to make some money and now. So Studio bypasses big screen release for its new Pixar animation with plans to debut the film on Disney Plus on Christmas Day. Now this move, it got some angry responses from theaters as well. Here you have the UNIC or the Union International de Cinemas. I'm sorry I butchered any announciation to that. I'm sure I have. A.K the International Union of Cinemas. This is their statement, too. This isn't coming from, say, a secondhand source anywhere. Quote, Walt Disney Studios' decision to release Soul directly onto their Disney Plus streaming platform, depriving many audiences across Europe from seeing it on the big screen, has shocked and dismayed all cinema operators. The vast majority of cinemas across Europe and indeed many regions of the world are now open and able to offer a safe and enjoyable return for audiences. Cinema operators have invested massively in offering the safest possible experience to their audience on the basis of promising schedule of new film releases. Yet again, however, you notice this, yet again. So they're saying, hey, you've done this to us before. They find a distributor delivering another blow. The decision on Seoul is doubly frustrating for operators who are counting on the release. And notice this statement here. After the film was previewed at a number of key European film festivals. So you went out, you took advantage of this opportunity, but you deprive us of actually being able to uh, live off this symbiotic relationship. Good stuff there, huh? Continuing, there is compelling evidence that where audiences have returned, they have found the experience both safe and enjoyable. But it is also clear that it is the release of new films that will make all the difference in encouraging people back to the big screen. Indeed, across Europe, many cinemas have since reopening successfully screened countless local releases. Underlying the first-run titles are now more important than ever. UNIC offers sincere thanks to those distribution partners who have stood firm and continued to bring films to the cinema. They have not only demonstrated their recognition of the value of theatrical release, but also their support Support for our shared vision of unity. That commitment to European cinema will not be forgotten. I wonder what that double implication is there, too. If you forget about us, we'll forget about you. Decisions to postpone titles, to bypass cinema, and the value they create are extremely disappointing and concerning, they should be concerning, and will only delay the day that the whole industry is able to put this crisis behind us. It is not only cinemas and audiences who are missing out. The situation must surely also be deeply frustrating to the creators and talent who want to see their films on the big screen. While cinemas will struggle to recover with not new releases, so in truth, too, will our studio partners, whose decisions 
in such circumstances risk causing irreparable damages to key markets, many of whom will be less well-placed to support their films when they decide to release them. It is no exaggeration to say that by the time some studios decide that the moment is right to release their films, it may be too late for many European cinemas. And that That isn't just for European cinemas. That is the state of disrepair that we find theaters in, period. Now, like I said at the beginning of this, all of this is transpiring with a backdrop of movie business leaders, a.k.a. the people that are in charge of companies like, I don't know, Disney, urging Congress to fund theater bailout. So again, they want your money to go in and to support prop up these businesses, but they're not willing to chance it when it comes to their releases. Isn't that telling? And also, you know, you've already propped up Disney, by the way. You've given them millions, millions upon millions. Quote, leaders of the nation's movie theater business, which has been hammered by the beer bug, are urging Congress to provide bailout funds so the industry can survive. And note that here, the industry. We're talking about something that is supposedly, again, symbiotic. But, well, Disney, I mean, look at what they're saying. Yeah, they're saying we don't need you you, but you, you need us, and we're going to walk away. But hey, give that taxpayer money, why don't you? So the letter urges Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Senate Democratic Leader Chuck Schumer, and House Republican Leader Kevin McCarthy to redirect unallocated funds from the CARES Act to proposals that help businesses that have suffered the steepest revenue drops during the beer bug. The National Association of Theater Owners, the Directors Guild, of America, the Motion Pictures Association, and more than 70 directors, producers, and writers sign the letter. So you have all of these names here that have signed on to this. And what's telling about that? Like I said, many of these people probably do believe in it. But again, the companies that are asking for this They won't put their own money where their proverbial mouth is, and neither will these people. You know, they may say a lot, but I'm sure that they're not going to put their money there either. So thank you for your leadership at this challenging time in our country. The letter begins. As you consider forthcoming beer bug relief legislation, we ask you to prioritize assistance for the hardest hit industries like our country's beloved movie theaters. No doubt you are hearing from many, many businesses that need relief, Movie theaters are in dire straits, and we urge you to redirect unallocated funds from the CARES Act to proposals that help businesses that have suffered the steepest revenue drop due to the beer bug or to enact new proposals such as the Restart Act. Absent a solution designed for their circumstances, theaters, they may not survive the impact of the beer bug. The beer bug has been a devastating financial blow to cinemas. 93% of movie theater companies had over 75% in losses in the second quarter of 2020. If the status quo continues, 69% of small and mid-sized movie theater companies will be forced to file for bankruptcy or close permanently, and 66% of theater jobs will be lost. Our country cannot afford to lose social, economic, and cultural value the theaters provide. The movie-going experience is central to American life. 268 million people in North America went to the movies last year to laugh, cry, dream, and be moved together. Theaters are great unifiers where our nation's uh, most talented storytellers showcase their cinematic accomplishments. Every aspiring filmmaker, actor, and producer dreams to bring their art to the silver screen, an irreplaceable experience that represents the pinnacle of filmmaking achievement. So you hear this, you see them saying the words, you know, they're saying, hey, we want this to happen. But at the same time, like I said, actions, they are not saying the same thing. What they're saying is, hey, they're on their own, and it's up to you, the taxpayer, to help this out.
Now, what's really telling about this move is that it's another PR disaster in the making. And Disney, they don't really care what happens. You know, they're trying to fight for survival. You can see this developing in headlines like this, where Disney, they're having to fire workers by the thousands because they can't open Disney World. Their executives, they're clinging to absorbent bonuses. And the battle to reopen Disneyland is getting more desperate. I think that this really speaks to the mindset of Disney, too, because most of their money comes from parks and recreation. You know, the more they stay closed, the more they lose. And well, California right now, that utter state of disrepair, yeah, things aren't getting better there. So they're willing to risk a PR nightmare like we just saw while asking you for taxpayer money, because what else can they do? I mean, like I said, I think that this, it's really telling. It's infuriating, too, because it's kind of an insult to you as a taxpayer, you as a person that is dealing with all of this stuff as well. But anyway, let me know what you think about this. And as always, thank you for showing up. Thank you for participating. I enjoy that. I like looking through the comments. Let me know, like I said, what you think. You make these endeavors possible too. A lot of these places forgot that. They thought they were too big to fail. And well, look at them now. They are indeed failing. I mean, no one is too big to fail. They should have remembered who put them there in the first place. If you want to help out the channel too, there are links in the description. That includes the comic book. If you want to check out our comic book, we could definitely use the support right now. But anyway, regardless, thank you for showing up, being here. Appreciate you. Till next time.